Now we're on to rule five. We want to look at the indefinite integral of an exponential function. And remember, one way to approach taking antiderivatives is to think what had this for its derivative. So if we want to take the integral of e to the x, dx just means with respect to x, we want to think about, well, what had a derivative of e to the x? And what has a derivative of e to the x is e to the x plus c. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and the derivative of c is 0, so we get back to what was in the integrand. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x plus c. So if we look at this first one, we just have a constant multiple up front that we're going to keep, whether we're taking a derivative or an antiderivative. So we're going to keep the 3, and then we're going to think about the antiderivative e to the x is e to the x plus c. The only way to make this a little bit more difficult would be to have a more complicated function. So for this next one, we want to take the antiderivative of not just e to the x, but e to the x plus 1 over x to the fifth, which we are going to have to take a second to rewrite because we have something stuck in the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this as taking the antiderivative of e to the x plus x to the negative 5. To take that exponent out of the denominator, we're going to make it negative. And now we're ready to take the antiderivative of each piece. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then we have the antiderivative of x to the negative 5. So we're going to add 1, put it in the bottom, put it up top. So we'll have 1 over negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. x to the negative 4 plus c. Or we could write that as just e to the x minus 1 fourth x and negative 4, whichever you would prefer. Now we're going to look at a couple more examples. It's going to be a little bit trickier. We have to first rewrite this because we have something stuck in the denominator and then we also have a root. So we could rewrite this as x to the negative 3 to get it out of the denominator. And then we have x to the first power over the fourth root. And then we have minus e to the x. We rewrite the take the integral symbol because we didn't integrate yet. And then we have a dx to go with it. Just means with respect to x, single variable calculus. So first piece, we're going to add 1, put it in the denominator, put it up top as our new power. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So 1 over negative 2, x to the negative 2. Next one, we have a fraction to add 1 to. You can do some side work if you need to or grab your calculator. But 1 fourth plus 1 is 1 fourth plus 4 fourths, which is 5 fourths. So we would have 1 over 5 fourths, x to the 5 fourths, minus the antiderivative e to the x is e to the x, plus c. We need to get rid of complex fractions. So I'm going to keep that negative 1 half x to the negative 2. And when your new power is 5 fourths, instead of writing 1 over 5 fourths, we need to flip it to be 4 fifths. 1 over 5 over 4 just ends up being 4 over 5. And then we have minus e to the x plus c. We can do the same exact thing with the next one. We'd have to rewrite first because we have a square root. So I'm going to have 5 e to the x minus x to the 1 half, really. And now we can take our antiderivative. I'm going to keep the constant multiple 5. The antiderivative e to the x is e to the x. And then we have minus, I need to do 1 half plus 1, which would give me 3 halves. So I would have 1 over 3 halves, x to the 3 halves. I know I'm just going to end up flipping it out front. So I usually do not do this step. I don't think it helps my brain at all. Whenever I write a new power as being a fraction, I write my new power and then I flip it out front. So I, instead of writing 1 over 3 halves, x to the 3 halves, would write x to the 3 halves. When my new power is a fraction, it gets flipped out front. 1 over 3 halves is the same thing as 2 thirds plus c. So just like the last one was x to the 5 fourths out front ended up being 4 over 5. 
this one, the new power is 3 over 2. So out front, we're going to put a 2 over 3. Because 1 divided by 3 over 2 is the same thing as 2 over 3.